I can feel it eating my heart. I want to die. Hey guys, welcome back to Cute Fuzzy Weasels Game Reviews. Still need to shorten that name. Anyway, today we'll be looking at Gunman Chronicles, an FPS. Again, set in the old western times of outer space. In the future! First thing you might notice about this game is that it looks really grungy, but I like that. I like the big chunky polygony graphics that you used to see back in the day. You know, the day, the 90s. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie. God damn, the 90s were back in the day. Man, I'm fucking old. Anyway, this game was originally developed as a Quake 1 total conversion mod. Then it got ported to Quake 2 and finally to Gold Source. Then during a trade show, some guys at Valve saw the demo and threw a bunch of money at the developers and this thing got made into a full-fledged game and sold in stores. I bought my copy at Walmart back in 2001, probably the third or fourth best $9.99 I've ever spent. In Gunman, you play a gunman, Major Archer, part of a colonial military organization on the frontier of space made up of eyeless clones that all dress like Civil War era Union soldiers and fly around in really cramped spaceships. You're a survivor of Banjer Prime, humanity's disastrous first encounter with the Xenomes, an invasive predatory alien race that eats metal and people and giggles. <laughs> I'm not really seeing the threat here. I mean, aside from the whole eating metal bit, I, I guess I can understand how that would be bad if you were on a spaceship or something. But for the most part, I'm able to kill these things on my own with very little effort. And I'm not some super soldier either. I'm just some guy in a cotton uniform. I mean, a super sci-fi on army union mega fatigue. At least I get a cool cap. You and a bunch of other clones are sent to investigate a mysterious old gunman signal coming from an uncharted jungle planet. I like how all planets in sci-fi movies and games seem to have no real distinct biomes. Khajiit is a forest planet. Endor is a forest planet. Hoth is an ice planet. Coruscant is a city planet. This red planet from Star Trek is a red planet. Can you imagine if aliens were like this? If Gublar and Yamag landed a flying saucer in the middle of Universal Studios' backlot and thought the whole Earth was made up of nothing but big sound stages and fake neighborhoods? So all your eyeless clone friends fly down to this planet of dinosaurs. Just roll with it. When all of a sudden you get ambushed by a group of space bandits led by your old boss, the General. What's his name? I don't know, he's just the General. And he hates you because he thinks you left him behind to die. Because you did. In fact, I'm pretty sure you're playing an attempted murderer in this game. The rest of the game you spend traveling from one planet to the next fighting dinosaurs, cowboys, robots, a killer AI, and aliens. I miss older games. When you could have, you know, a plot that was fun and not dour, depressing, gray, or full of bombfetti. No, this game is grungy, gray, Full of bomb, eh, yeah, never mind. You get the point, it's wacky. I like that in a game. I like that in a story. I like wackiness in stories. A little absurdity, it never hurt anybody. By far the coolest thing about this game is how it handles guns. Every single weapon you have with the exception of the knife has a customizable fire setting. Very few games at this point had a setup like this. Best of all, every single setting is available from the outset and you can just change them up on the fly. Though I do wish the menus paused the game. I mean, I understand why in multiplayer player you couldn't pause the game, but come on, it's single player. Because you can change up virtually anything about the weapon, it lends itself extremely well to just about any playstyle. Like running in guns blazing? There's a setting for that. Like clearing out an entire room first? There's a setting for that. Like torturing people? There's a setting for that. Like painting? There's a setting for that. There are so many different ways to set up the weapons, I can't really list them all without turning this review into one big 
list. But here's a pick of my top three. Number one, Super Shotgun. Set your rounds to four and your spread to low or marksman. Now you have a shotgun that fires four shells in a small spread. If you can get up close, this setup will one-shot just about every enemy you can find with the exception of bosses. Number two, Lightning Ball, or Fuck Up a Whole Room setting. Towards the middle of the second stage in the game, you'll run across this weapon called the Plurilus Blade. It's basically everything you thought you'd be able to do with a lightning ball if you broke the glass on it. If you put the fire settings at ball and push the power all the way up, what you can make is basically the BFG 9000, a ball of energy that shoots little balls of energy at everything. You can clear out a whole room with this shit. And number three, deadly gas balls. During the fourth part of the game, you'll get this gun that shoots caustic shit at people. You can control the mixture to such a degree that you can make it do anything. Hell, you can set the globs this thing shoots out to just explode on contact with the air and kill yourself. I can take it. If you set it up just right, though, you can make it stick a green ball that spews black poisonous gas at people. This shit will kill everything it gets near. It's great for trapping doorways and exits that you know some asshole is going to run out of the moment you turn your back. There's a lot more to say about this stuff, and we'll get into it, but I'm trying to experiment with the setup of these reviews, so we're going to go ahead and get into the grading now, just to see how it helps the flow of the episode. So let me know in the comments below if you like this way better. So here we go, the story. I really feel bad that this game ended up not spawning any other related media because this story I think is a lot more layered than it lets on. I mean the setting can't be that far ahead in the future just judging by the technology and yet humanity is actually colonizing other galaxies. That means there must have been some enormous technological leap that must have occurred not too long ago like maybe three to four hundred years. And look at all these planets. They're covered in ruins. That tells me that humanity probably expanded really, really fast, and then all the colonists died out for some reason. Was it the Xenomes, or was it something else? We may never know. There have been multiple attempts to remake this game in the Source engine, but it looks like they all died. And that's a real shame, because this game would look fucking amazing in Source. Also, remember back at the start of this review when I said the general thinks that you left him to die because you did? Well, you did. Take a listen to what he has to say the first time you meet him in the game. Hello, Major Archer. I feel certain you remember me. Think back five years. You might recall a little scene that unfolded on Banjo Prime? Scene of a crime, I should say. You weren't even a Major then. You had no authority to order the retreat. Not while your general was still alive? If you'd read your science report more carefully, you'd have known that Silicon Light has no chance of digesting fellow gunmen or the scientists. But you left us all to rot in the guts of those Silicon Beasts. That's a pretty big oversight, wouldn't you say? I wonder why the gunman would have passed something like that up. I mean, if it was my commanding officer, hell yes I want to rescue him once that little bombshell hit. Unless, of course... I wanted him gone. Maybe they promote like the Terran Confederation and you go up in rank if your commander dies. Maybe before Banjer Prime, I wasn't Major Archer, but Captain Archer. Then my commanding officer heroically dies and I end up with a nice juicy promotion. That would explain why I'm so eager to kill the guy. I mean, aside from the fact that he controls an army of bandits and aliens, but maybe I just want his mouth shut permanently. I mean, my character does take a lot of really stupid chances. I seem to have no issue uploading a dangerous AI that's already tried to kill me once into the computer of a hidden Xeno-making base on planet New Mexico seems like a needlessly reckless move, but then again, dead men tell no tales, right? Baseless speculation aside, the story in this game is a lot better than it has any right to be. Yeah, it's simplistic and serves no other real purpose than shepherding the player along from place to place, but it does a good enough job at being more than that that I have to give it some serious points. 90. Simple and perfect for the game it was crafted for. On to gameplay. Like I said before, gun customization really lends itself well to the whole experience. The rest is... Well, the rest is basically Half-Life. 
The AI is okay for the time, even challenging at certain points, though most of the time that has less to do with how smart the NPCs were and more to do with whatever kind of one-hit gun they have going on. Still, I found myself really having to think tactically at times, and needing to take advantage of the environment around me. In simple ways, yes, but really if you think about it, it's not really all that different from how it is now. The only thing that's changed between 2000 and today is now, instead of needing to press a button, you just sort of automatically take cover. You don't need to jump around around to get on things, just run up and jump. No more crouch jumping, no more finagling yourself in the air to hit a ledge, it's just assumed for you. In this way, Gunman is an example of classic FPS architecture, and I appreciate that. At the same time though, the vehicle segment got really boring after a while, especially when you have to double back, which happens a lot when you get the tank. You end up driving for several minutes on end, just kind of wandering around this big empty space. And it's the gold source engine, so it is a big, empty space. I remember at one point getting out of the thing and running around till I found this chair. Okay, I need, to, I need to go back up here for a second. Here's something you might not know about me. I really love urban exploration, like going around trying to find abandoned places. I'm probably lucky that I lived out in the middle of nowhere in that regard and never really got in trouble for breaking and entering any boarded up places, even though there are more than a few around me. Like this place. God damn, I want to go in there. So I was wandering around this place trying to find the controls for this crusher so I could move my tank along, and I started to realize this was an old house. At some point in the not-too-distant past of this planet, early settlers must have set up this place. And right here, right here, was a chair they used to use. They probably used to sit in this chair for dinner or other things. And now it's surrounded by dead bandits. Bandits whose bodies are probably just gonna be left out here too. I push the chair around and eventually manage to get it outside. I know this planet is fake and all, but I just, I had to push the chair away from here. I knew that one day one of these machines would catch fire and burn the old house up and this chair had to be saved. It had to be saved and left out for the next canyon wall dweller to find and wonder who used this chair and why is it out here? It's a mystery. God damn, I need a life. So on the whole, I'd say gameplay and Gunman gets an 88. It's everything good and everything bad about the original Half-Life. And it's super nostalgic to me, though in all honesty, if I had to look at it without nostalgia goggles, it would probably get an 80. Eh. Let's average that out then. 84. Yeah, okay. Graphics. Oh boy. Okay, so this is another grade where I kind of have to use this caveat that, you know, the game came out in 2000. <laughs> I will say, though, that everything works most of the time. Jesus. Look, if your sphere can only be made with a maximum of 45 sides, just use a sprite. Of course, this doesn't really excuse the eyeless clones. Even Half-Life 1 got eyes right, at least. I mean, what's going on here? Everyone's acting like the lights are too bright. They're even flinching around. What's our mission, sir? I don't know, Sergeant. I can't see nothing. I'm Come so on, glad we got to go get that piece. Tell me I'm holding a gun. I can't, I can't see anything. Tell me where I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Middle of the road here, but I'd have to say 72. They did the most with what they had, and I can't fault them for that. But this game has definitely not aged well at all. Music. Well, like the sound effects, it's fucking awesome and well-fitting for what's there. It's got this low-quality 90s fuzz about it that just screams basement production. I love it. But you know what I love more? The sound effects in general. Everything sounds so intense, so alien. I mean, listen to this. Just close your eyes and listen. 
Okay, so what the fuck do you think that was? Really, guess. A, a holy relic? Some kind of computerized choir of androids? No, it was a fucking box opening. A box. Or how about this? So what do you think that thing was? Alien toilet? Crane? Nope, it's an oversized USB stick. This is the mainframe you attempted to destroy on the fair moon. It's also chunky and cold. The robot enemies you face sound like you're beating the shit out of old slot machines. All the cowboys sound like they're talking and eating cereal at the same time. And you would think that would make it not work, but for some reason it all just works. Music and sound gets a 95. Gimmick. Well, shit, I kind of already talked about this. 95. It just misses me giving it 100 because while the options that were there were numerous, they're very concentrated among only a few weapons. I would have liked to see more variety in some of the others, like maybe being able to electrify the knife or make it hot or something. Maybe a slow fire mode for the assault rifle. And definitely have going into the modding menu pause the game. Really. But that's it. And very minor improvements on the system would make the thing fucking perfect. Multiplayer. When I originally wrote this review a year ago, yes, it took me a year to get to this. I wasn't able to test out multiplayer because of satellite internet. But since then, I've gotten really fast internet and here we are. Multiplayer is actually really fun. It's Half-Life Deathmatch, so it's kind of hard to go wrong, though something is going on with my Steam account. I can't host servers or join a friend's server, but I can join someone else who's not in my friends list. It's kind of complicated. Creepypasta about this game, there are only two servers active for it, and they're both empty pretty much all of the time. Me, Jojo, Repair Guy, and Agent Black Arrow played together for about four hours, and maybe one other person showed up. But they just kind of wandered around and didn't do anything. They never shot at us, they just looked around at us fighting. Someone can write a story about that. Aside from that, the only issue I ran into was the weapon customization. You can change it on the fly with your mouse wheel, but it's still incredible incredibly distracting. I'm not sure how they could have changed it so it was a little more streamlined, maybe let you set up the gun combinations with macro keys, I don't know. I wouldn't ditch the system in multiplayer though, it was a lot of fun fighting with my balls. Of uh, lightning. My lightning balls. Oh. Multiplayer gets a solid 90. Got a little repetitive after a while, but I think that had more to do with the lack of other players. And finally, fun. The totally subjective score based on what percentage of the time I was having fun in the game. I would say probably about 92% of the time I was actually having fun. That 8% mostly comprises getting lost in the tank getting turned around by level design, and somewhat unclear objectives that cropped up every now and then. So the final grade, 87, a B plus, respectable job. So that was Gunman Chronicles, a great game that has unfortunately become kind of a forgotten gem. Maybe one day someone will dig it up and do something with it. I personally would love to see a Black Mesa style remake of it, but I'm not sure the interest is there, which is kind of a shame. If you want to play it, the files can be found at a bunch of places, like here, or you can buy it online relatively inexpensively. There's even a patch so you can get it to interface with Steam as a mod. It updates the rendering some too, so you can play it in HD. If you're interested, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. Anyway, this is Cute Fuzzy Weasel. Have a good day, and join me again next time to watch me weave a story.